Hello there friends, I'm Carl Zipper. I run the Backwoods Engineering programs here at Mount Alamuchi Scout Reservation in Byram, New Jersey. I'm here to talk to you today about one of mankind's most noble pursuits, um, specifically, you know, tying knots with rope. Um, I've got two knots that I wanna to talk to you about right now, um, two very useful knots and two very closely related knots. And those are the clove hitch and the rolling hitch. Um, both are for tying off a piece of rope um, to a wooden spar or a pole or anything else really that you could tie a rope off to. Um, the clove hitch you might have heard of. Um, it's the knot that you use to start and end uh, most, most lashings that you would tie to join um, two wooden staves together. You know, but it's also got a lot of other uses that um, you know, will only become more apparent to you as you become familiar with the rope. Um, to tie the clove hitch is pretty easy. I'm going to show you two different ways of tying it. Um, the first way you take the rope, you take your working end of the rope, you come down to the spar here, um, you wrap around the spar, and you wrap around so that you form an X on the top of the, the spar here. You keep wrapping around, and you take your working end, and you tuck right under the middle of that X. Then you pull it tight, push it together, pull it tight. Make sure you leave yourself a decent length of rope sticking out the end here. If you leave this too short, you know, it can pull out. Um, when you put tension on the rope. And that, my friends, is the clove hitch. Um, when you're tying your, lash, your clove hitch at the end of a lashing, um, there's a slightly different way that you can tie it. And I encourage you to watch one of the videos um, that I have up about how to tie good lashings in order to learn that way. Um, there is a third way, though, that's sometimes useful to tie the clove hitch. Sometimes you want to tie a clove hitch around a spar but you, don't, you can't use the end of the rope because, you know, you're working in the middle of a long piece of rope and it would be too long to pull everything through. It would be too much of a mess. Um, a great example of this is if you're building a monkey bridge when you have to tie the handrails onto the um, A-frames at each end of the bridge. It's hard to put the clove hitch on there. But there's a way you can tie the clove hitch um, without using either end of the rope. What you do, take the middle of your rope. You don't need either end for this. Take the middle of the rope, form an overhand loop, like so. Um, in an overhand loop, you fold the rope over on itself to make the loop. Now take the rope over here, form another overhand loop, like so, sort of like a figure eight. Then fold that down on itself, and you can pass it over the end of your spar and pull tight. And you have, just like before, a nice clove hitch. Um, the clove hitch is, like I said, a great knot. It works really well, um, it holds really well, when the force that you apply to it is perpendicular at 90 degrees to the, um, to the spar or whatever you have it tied off to. If you apply that force at a more acute angle, it doesn't hold quite as well. It's more likely to um, slip down the spar when you pull it, if it's a really heavy load. Um, so there's a slightly better hitch that we can tie um, if we're applying a load like that, say, for example, for a guy line, for a tower or a flagpole that you might be building. And that knot's called the rolling hitch. It's a I'm very close relative of the clove hitch. To tie the rolling hitch is also very easy. What you do, take the rope, take your working end of the rope, lay it over the spar, wrap all the way around one time on the sort of downhill side of the knot, the side where the force is going to be pulling. This is what's called making a round turn, when you wrap all the way around one time. Once you've made that round turn, keep wrapping around, but cross over to the other side of your long end, your standing end. Keep wrapping around, come up, and tuck under. And then tighten it up, just like, um, just like you did your clove hitch. This is the rolling hitch. You can see it looks very similar to the clove hitch, but it has this extra wrap of rope on this side, and that extra friction helps make the knot less likely to slide down the pole when you um, put a hard tension on it. So, that's the rolling hitch. This is the clove hitch. Both very useful knots. Um, practice them, learn them, use them. I hope you learned a thing or two. Have a nice day. Thanks.